Hello NBA fans and welcome back to another episode here on the NBA the week that was. In today's video, I'll be analyzing the best game from August 5th, the best game from August 6th, and the best game from August 7th. So without further ado, let's get right into the analysis of the first game. The best game on August 5th happened between the Denver Nuggets and the San Antonio Spurs, in which the Denver Nuggets took the victory 132-126 over the Spurs. In this game, I'm I'm highlighting this game because of Michael Porter Jr. The lottery, the la he was the last pick in the 2018 lottery, and he could have been the first pick in that draft if it weren't if it weren't for his back injury, which ruled him out of his only college season in at uh, the University of Missouri. Michael Porter Jr. Man, he's like a K KD type mold player. He's a 6'10 scoring forward. He can sc score on all three levels. He's very athletic, but has a great jump shot. In this game, he tr proved his true potential, getting 30 points and 15 rebounds, uh, rebounds along with two blocks, scoring at always. Whether it was from a three-point shot, layups, dunks, free throws, he can do it all, and he's an integral part. I feel he's the X factor to the Nuggets' title run. They have a great piece in Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray is proven, Gary Harris is proven, Will Barton is proven, Millsap is proven, but Michael Porter Jr. can either stretch them to the conference finals if not the finals, or can be the guy who gets them eliminated in the first or second round due to his inability to step up when it matters the most. However, I also want to mention the Spurs and their reliance on their young guys with LaMarcus Aldridge out of the bubble, DeMar DeRozan obviously aging, the Spurs are finally handing over the reins to old guys, such, uh, young guys, such as DeJounte Murray, Derek White, and Lonnie Walker, and they're all playing very well, especially Derek White, averaging 21 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists a game, which are great numbers for a guy who was picked in the second round, and he's proving to be a great player for the Spurs, so I'm glad that the Spurs are taking the young route rather than sticking with old guys as they've, done, as they've done for a while now and realizing it's time for a rebuild in San Antonio. But the key factor of this of this match was Michael Porter Jr. and his just the his flash of his potential that he has. The best game on August 6th was between the 4th seeded Miami Heat and the 1 seeded Milwaukee Bucks. This game was a tale of two halves. In the first half, Keep in mind, the Miami Heat didn't have Jimmy Butler or Goran Dragic, two of their key veterans on this team, and Butler, obviously one of the stars of this team, and Dragic, a key, a key contributor off the bench. Both weren't playing, yet the uh, Heat just erupted and had a 19-point lead going into halftime. They were shooting at all cylinders, making most of the threes around, shooting 60% from three in the first half, with guys like Jay Crowder, Tyler Hero off the bench having 16 points in the first half, Bam Adebayo, while not being able to score on Giannis or Brook Lopez, being the facilitator of the offense, and Kendrick Nunn and Duncan Robinson doing their thing, scoring the ball. It looked like that he were going to dominate the Bucks without Jimmy Butler and uh, Goran Dragic, which was going to be a big statement for them. However, the Bucks ended up winning by 14 points after being down almost 15 or around 19 points at halftime. <coughs> Giannis Antetokounmpo, man, he has the ability to change a game like that. He just did his thing, Euro stepping, bullying his way to the paint, getting in ones, just scoring in just the Giannis way, bullying players, getting to the rim and dunking the ball with some great spin moves in between. Chris Middleton started doing his thing, being one of the most efficient shooters this year. Guys like Brooke Lopez making the threes that when it matters, as well as Pat Connaughton who was finally back after uh, getting diagnosed with COVID-19. He was able to play and had a key impact on the defensive end in the second half especially. So again, it was a tale of two halves. At first it looked like a heat statement win, but it turned out to be old reliable bucks playing the best when it matters the most and proving themselves as the top contenders from the Eastern Conference in most people's eyes. The last game I'll be speaking about happened on August 7th and it was between the Magic and the 76ers. While the 76ers didn't win by 7 points, that doesn't matter. The result doesn't matter for this game. It's what happened during the game that mattered. In the third quarter, Ben Simmons was forced to leave the game due to a knee injury. And today, it was determined that he's going to leave the bubble and need to have a surgery to remove a loose body in within his within his knee. That's a big, big, big thing for the uh, big, big impact on the Philadelphia 76ers. This was looking like one of those years where it's make it or break it for the Sixers. I mean, they're young, they've given enough time for Embiid and Simmons to work together and really, because they both have the potential 
together to lead the 76ers to a championship with the talent on that roster but with ben simmons gone man it's a big onus on the sixers to really really perform in the playoffs without him will they be able to i mean it's gonna give Embiid more more freedom in the post and they can surround him with shooters without simmons on the floor but their their ceiling is so much lower without simmons on the floor due to simmons insane insane per, uh, playmaking and defensive abilities it might be the end of Embiid in 70 in the 76ers franchise it might be the end of simmons they're both superstars who can be top 10 players in the NBA but are constantly getting injured. It might be the last year of Bill uh, Bill Brown, uh, Brett Brown. If Brett Brown can't perform, they might uh, end up removing Brown from the contract and letting Simmons and Embiid try it one more year with a new head coach. So I feel this Simmons injury is going to have a massive impact on the future of the 76ers, which is why it was key to mention this matchup between the Magic and the 76ers in which this injury occurred. And with that, I would like to conclude this episode of the NBA, the week that was. As always, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new. If you have any feedback for me, good or bad, please leave in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you guys on the next episode here on the NBA, the week that was. See ya!